So hey guys, I am Sai Tejan. Welcome to Proton Stock. The topic of this video is Arrhenius equation. So let's have a quick intro about it and then we'll see about the real equation. So basically Arrhenius equation connects temperature and rate of reaction. Basically these are the two main factors involved in this equation. So let's see this equation first before seeing the main Arrhenius equation. So this equation gives you rate of reaction here k is called rate constant and its concentration and this n is the order of reaction okay don't bother about these all terms uh, so here this equation i'm telling you to tell you about the connection between k and rate of reaction so basically if you take a reaction let's say some reaction is there and its concentration is fixed and order of uh, reaction is obviously fixed there then the rate or only depends on k the rate constant whatever factors influences k will also influence rate right you're getting my point right so i'm telling this equation because the arrhenius equation deals with rate constant and it doesn't deal with the rate of the reaction directly okay you got that point right? that was a simple point i wanted to tell you before starting the main equation so Arrhenius, Swan, Arrhenius dis, uh, introduced this equation in 1889 and we are not going beyond this uh, in history of Arrhenius equation because this is not in history class. Okay, let's see the equation. So as this is an equation video, you should know, you should and must know the ins and outs of the equation so that you can become perfect in this topic. Okay, so this is the equation k is equal to a into e power minus e a by r t. Okay, so let's see all the terms one by one in detail. So k is basically the rate constant which I told you about in the introduction section. Okay, so a is an important term in this uh, equation which stands for Arrhenius constant or pre-exponential factor or probability factor. Now, what is this A? It have a uh, lot of names. So, let's understand what is it. So, basically, uh, to convert some reactants into some products, we have reactant molecules. Okay, let's see. Let's say these two are reactant molecules. To convert them from reactants to products, these both should collide and they should collide in the right orientation. Okay, so these are the two things uh, we need there is some probability of collide two molecules colliding and some probability of those two molecules colliding in the right orientation and from these uh, two probabilities p1 and p2 we get a okay i hope you understood that right a is basically like the product uh, of probabilities that two molecules will collide and they will collide with the right orientation so that reactants would convert to products okay so then we have e in the equation e is euler's number or you might know it as the base of natural logarithm which is 2.718 blah 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 so that is a simple one then there is another important one which is ea and it stands for activation energy you might be wondering what what is activation energy okay so let's take an uh, a reaction and if you are a chemistry student you would be knowing that every reaction needs certain amount of energy a minimum energy to convert its reactants to products and without this energy that won't happen and that is basically the activation energy so activation energy is basically the minimum amount of energy for reactants to convert into products okay so that is uh, the a simple one uh, i hope you understood that then we have R here. R, as you might be knowing, you will be seeing in it a lot of places in chemistry. It's called the universal gas constant whose value is 8.314 uh, joule per mole Kelvin. Okay, so that is a simple constant. And then we have temperature here, which is usually taken in, taken in Kelvins. Okay, so I hope you understood the terms. Let's revise once again. So here K is the rate constant a is the arrhenius constant minus e e a is basically the activation energy r is the gas constant and t is the temperature okay uh, there is a special relation between a and k as you might be knowing that k 
k depends on the order of reaction okay the units of k depends on the order of reaction as we saw in the introduction equation the a also will have the same same units as of k and this term is unitless because it's a e power e is a constant so this is a simple point you have to remember that the units of k is equal to the units of a i hope you understood that right so that is good enough we have understood the equation its uh, terms and all now let's say what does it mean let's take the equation again it says k is equal to a into e power minus e a by r t okay now what does it mean so let's say that if temperature increases what happens to e a by r t let me uh, so think about it did you get that yeah so as you got it right this quantity decreases now if this decreases what will happen to e power minus e a by r t got that yes it will increase so now uh, this is clear that k increases with t so if t increases k also increases so that is the basic relation this equation means right so this is the basic meaning we get from this equation that might seem very simple to you but it's not that simple this equation have a lot of applications in industries to calculate optimum temperatures and activation energies etc we'll see that in application section okay so before that let's uh, see some important forms of this equation okay so we see uh, two major forms of this equation frequently in problem solving and in a lot of applications okay so let's see the first form uh, let's take the equation again k is equal to a into e power minus e a by r t okay so let's take another color here and uh, and apply ln on both sides so ln is basically log base e for the people who don't know ln k is basically ln a dot e power minus e a by r t now as you might be knowing from the properties of uh, logarithms this would become ln a plus ln e power minus e a by r t so this is a property of logarithms wherein log a into b becomes log a plus log b now that would further simplify to ln a plus minus e a by r t into ln e okay so this is a uh, this is another property of logarithms where log a power b is b into log a that is what i did and further simplifying it it's ln a minus e a by r t now how is this so this is ln e okay so ln e is basically log of e base e and we know that log of a base a is 1 so this becomes 1 and this is the first form first important form of uh, uh, arrhenius equation now there is uh, a simplification again here if you put if you remove log base e and if you put log 10 let's represent it by log k this will be equal to log a minus e a by 2.303 rt okay now this is an important one we'll see how uh, where all this is applied in one of the examples how this is applied okay this is an important form of the equation just remember it note down it you will see a lot of problems on this okay let's see the next form i was talking about this actually comes from the first form only so first form was ln k is equal to ln a minus e a by r t right so if you take uh, one reaction let's say there is one reaction and there are two conditions wherein in the first condition k is k1 and t t is t1 and in the second reaction second condition it's uh, k2 and it's t2 now if you know k1 and if you know t1 and if you know t2 you can find k2 simply how do you do that 
let's say for the first situation it's ln k1 is equal to ln a minus ea by rt1 and for second situation it's ln k2 is equal to ln a minus ea by rt2 okay now if you uh, take this as first equation and second equation and you do 1 minus 2 you get ln k1 minus ln k2 is equal to so ln a ln a gets cancelled in subtraction and this becomes equal to ea by rt2 minus ea by rt1 now further simplifying this the final equation would look like ln k1 by k2 is equal to ea by r into 1 by t2 minus 1 by t1 okay so this is the second important form i was talking about uh, which gives which uh, using which you can find one of these uh, four factors if you know all the three others three other factors okay so that is the second form just note it down if you want it would be useful in problem solving so coming to the next part of the video let's see the applications of arrhenius equation so as I have already told you that Arrhenius equation is uh, used to find optimum temperature. Now let's suppose that there are some reactants in an industry and uh, they want to convert it into maximum products. Obviously any industry would want maximum products, right? So they, uh, they need to find a temperature where this would be maximum. So this is uh, done using Arrhenius equation. So that is first application. And then in laboratories, Arrhenius equation is used to find the activation energy of a, a chemical reaction based on its rate of reaction. So what chemists do, they uh, get the rate of reaction from observations. Okay, they do observations and they calculate an average rate of reaction for a reaction and they get activation energy. Okay, so that those were two simple uh, applications of uh, Arrhenius equation. Let's not go into a lot of applications. Uh, you can just search online, right? There is nothing to explain in that. Now, if we see example questions, uh, let's see two example questions in this video. And so, this is a simple uh, example of Arrhenius equation. Let's go through it first. Okay, so it says that the activation energy of a chemical reaction is 100 kilojoule per mole. Let's note down that Ea activation energy is 100 kilojoules per mole. Okay, then it says that its A factor is 10 per mole per second. So A is 10 m minus 1 s minus 1. Then it says that find the rate constant of this equation at a temperature of 300 Kelvin. Now it says that temperature is 300 Kelvin. It may we need to find k okay this is simple substitution problem let's see for let's take form number one of the Arrhenius equation so that it becomes really easy so ln k is equal to ln a minus e a by r t let's substitute the values it is ln k is equal to ln of a is 10 minus e a is 100 uh, it's kilojoules, so adding three more zeros, and uh, R is obviously 8.314 in joules, and uh, T is given 300 kelvins. Okay, so when you calculate this, it comes to be around minus 37.8. Okay, so that is a simple substitution problem. You can just uh, just to show that e uh, substitution of the equation it's a very simple problem now let's move on to a bit tough problem okay so let's see this problem uh, it's not that intuitive okay so that's why i said it's tough it's easy obviously so given the following graph uh, there is a graph which connects log k versus 1 by t and it says that if the slope is a degrees now it says that slope of this line is a and it says the y intercept is c so it says that this intercept is c right uh, it asks us to find out ea and a obviously in terms of small a and small c 
let's see how to solve that so so for this we have to understand the e form number one of our heinous equation in a better way let's take that form it's it is ln of k is equal to ln a minus e a by r t right so what is its form uh, as i told you already it's in y is equal to mx plus c form okay now m is slope here and c is the y intercept here so it's just getting terms okay you just have to know that this equation is in straight line form so here uh, how would it look if we write it in this form it is ln k is equal to minus e a by r into 1 by t plus ln a so you would have got the answer already uh, here intercept is ln a and uh, the slope is minus e a by r t now obviously uh, the slope we know that slope is tan a here right so m is equal to tan a is equal to minus e a by r now here we don't have value of a so if you have value of a you can just calculate e a okay so this is part one of it and as we saw that intercept is ln a here c is equal to ln a is equal to small c okay so intercept is c obviously here so ln a is equal to c and a will be equal to e power c right so this is the second part of it and this is the first part of it so it's just uh it's just matter of intuition that uh, you need to know that this equation is in this form otherwise it's pretty easy i found the problem interesting that's why i just included it here right so that's it for this video guys uh, i hope you liked it i hope you learned something about arginus equation and if you did don't forget to give a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and comment your views in the description below below so that we can improve the videos and give you better and better content thank you meet you in the next video